Okay, Assalamualaikum to everyone. I'm Dr. Salwani. In this sharing session, I will talk on oral glucose tolerance test or in the short form OGTT. First, we must understand the reason why we perform OGTT. So in this channel, I will share the indication of OGTT, the contract indication, how to perform oral glucose tolerance test, the preparation or instruction that we should give to the patient before OGTT and the interpretation of it. Basically, we use OGTT as one method to screen for diabetes mellitus. So as you can see in these two flowcharts, diabetes mellitus can be diagnosed by fasting glucose or random plasma glucose. In patients presented with symptoms of hyperglycemia like polyuria, polydipsia, lethargy, frequent urination at night, and etc., one documented hyperglycemia at a true fasting or random plasma glucose is sufficient to diagnose diabetes mellitus. However, if symptomatic individual has low plasma glucose, which is a fasting less than 7 millimole per liter, or random plasma glucose less than 11.1 millimole per liter, then oral glucose tolerance test OGTT is another option to confirm diabetes mellitus. But in asymptomatic individual, at least two documented hyperglycemia at two different times are required to confirm diabetes mellitus, and OGTT is indicated in asymptomatic individual if fasting or random plasma glucose reveal an equivocal result. Another indication of OGTT is to screen diabetes in pregnant women not known to have diabetes mellitus before. Oral glucose tolerance test is not indicated in person known case of diabetes mellitus and not indicated to monitor diabetic patient and not indicated to diagnose diabetic in ill patient. Okay, now we talk about principle of the oral glucose tolerance test. Okay, a glucose tolerance test is used to determine a person's ability to handle glucose load. Uh, the test can show whether a person can metabolize a standardized measured amount of glucose. Okay, after a glucose load, islet cell of pancreas will initiate insulin release to promote uptake of glucose by the cells. Okay, then insulin level and insulin functions determines the rate of fall of the blood glucose concentration. So, based on OGTT, we can diagnose someone with diabetes, impact fasting glucose or impact glucose tolerance. The impact fasting glucose, IFT, and impact glucose tolerance, IGT, also known as prediabetes. Diagnosis of prediabetes is crucial to prevent from development of diabetes mellitus or to de delay the development of diabetes mellitus. Important for us to know how to prepare the patient before the test. So we talk about patient's preparation before OGTT. So we, miss, we must instruct the patient carefully, ask them not to restrain their diet. Okay, perform the test in patient with unrestricted diet, at least containing 150 grams of carbohydrate per day, three days before the test. Okay, stop any medication that affect glucose metabolism, such as thiazide, OCP, steroid, three days before the test. Avoid stress, smoking, coffee, and exaggerated exercise before and during the test. The patient should fast around 10 to 12 hours and on the next morning, the test can be performed. A fasting sample is taken uh, to establish a baseline glucose level. Then, the patient will drink the glucose, which is 75 grams of glucose, dissolved in 250 to 300 ml of water. And in pediatric, the amount of glucose is dosed by weight, 1.75 gram per kg body weight while the maximum dose for all patients is uh, 75 grams. The recommended duration of drinking is 5 minutes. There are several ways to perform OGTT. Postprandial blood can be taken after an hour or after 2 hours postprandial. 
In our practice, we measure two hours post prandial. Throughout the test, the patient should remain inactive. Plain water is allowed, but excess hydration with water should be discouraged as this can impact the result of the test. So, how to interpret OGTT? Normal if fasting glucose is less than 6.1 and 2 hours post prandial less than 7.8 millimol per liter. Diagnosis of diabetes mellitus made if fasting is equal or more than 7.0 millimol per liter or 2 hours post prandial equal or more than 11.1 millimol per liter. Diagnosis of impact fasting glucose is made if fasting glucose fall between 6.1 to 6.9 millimole per liter and impact glucose tolerance diagnosed when 2 hours post prandial between 7.8 to 11 millimole per liter. I gave you three results of OGTT that you can practice to interpret. First, fasting 5.6 millimole per liter and 2 hours post prandial 7.2 millimole per liter. The second result of OGTT, fasting 6.0 millimole per liter, while 2 hours post prandial 10.3 millimole per liter. And the third scenario, fasting 7.0 millimole per liter, while 2 hours post prandial 15.0 millimole per liter. I hope you can make the conclusion based on the OGTT result that I gave just now. Okay, thank you for listening. Biochemistry is crucial but easy. See you in the next sharing session on urinalysis related to diabetes complication. Bye and assalamualaikum.